Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another edition of History Roadshow. When it comes to philanthropy, you'd be hard pushed to meet a queen whose benevolence and generosity achieved so much throughout her reign. In one particular case, it's been suggested she was more than charitable when it came to marriage in 1818, and she agreed to be with William, a 53-year-old Duke of Clarence. The thing was he had already been turned down by at least 12 princesses of European origin. So what attracted this lady? William was well known and not in a good way. He had a coarse mouth and was a womanizer, and the father to at least 10 illegitimate children. It's not what you'd call an inspiring choice when it comes down to matrimony. William was the third son of King George III, yet no one ever thought he would gain the highest order in the land. So what attracted this lady to this man? Sit back and relax now as we look at the incredible life of Queen Adelaide of saxe meiningen Please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to select all notifications so you never miss any of our videos. And with that said, let's begin today's story. Adelaide was born on the 13th of August 1792 at Meiningen in Germany. She was the oldest child of George I, Duke of Saxe-Meiningen, and her mother was Louise Eleonora. Adelaide's life was about to change. She was an amiable and loving woman, but little did she know what she was letting herself in for. William, on the other hand, came from a completely different background. From 13, he had been sent to fight in the American Revolution, he became a good friend to Horatio Nelson and probably had a girl in every port. When he reached 24, he wrote to his brother stating that he had three nasty doses of pox. His father was so angry. He retired William from the forces and insisted now he settle down to a more normal life. If normal is a word that can be used with such a man. But he never learnt his lessons. Almost right away he fell for another woman whose foul mouth displays matched his own and she had already had three children to different men. However, Dorothy Jordan, an actress, and William would stick it out for the next 20 years. Over that time, the couple had 10 children. However, they were pretty much penniless. Such a large family needed large amounts of money to keep it going. Dorothy continued to act. As for William, he was slowly being pulled away from the relationship. Charlotte, William's mother, told him his only option was to find a rich woman to aid his crippling financial situation. He left Dorothy in 1811 and started his hunt, but there was little to no one accepting him. His history laid out before him made it difficult to entice any respectable young lady. The situation became critical in 1818, the death of the heir, Princess Charlotte and her child, in childbirth. He had somehow found himself raised up the monarchy ladder and now had to marry and produce heirs. William's continuing search for a lady was becoming more improbable as time went by, until one day Adelaide, 26 year old, said yes. Sykes Meiningen was a tiny principality. Her home region's choice against London's highlights was a no-brainer in her eyes. After Adelaide arrived though in the country, she would discover that her wedding day would be a double affair, with William's brother also taking the marriage oath to a German bride. Edward, Duke of Kent and Victoria of saxe coburg tied the knot, and with both couples now raring to go, it would be a race to bring about a new heir. But Adelaide struggled. Her first child died in infancy. Two twin boys were stillborn, and again she suffered a further miscarriage. Adelaide never had any additional opportunity to produce offspring. Victoria, on the other hand, did produce some children. In a sad letter, Adelaide wrote to Victoria, asking if her children could also be considered hers too. But Victoria never really agreed, becoming even more defensive over time. William and Adelaide had failed in their marriage, yet Adelaide started to have more effect on her husband now. She settled him down and began to make inroads into his behaviour. William cut down on drinking and swearing and even gave up his love of mistresses. When George III died and George IV came to power, Adelaide tried to keep her distance from him. She found it distasteful that he was just as bawdy and scandalous as his predecessors. Over time, children were still being produced and the line of succession was looking much healthier. 
William's younger brother, Adolphus, the Duke of Cambridge, had a son called George in 1819. Then two daughters, Augusta and Mary Adelaide, who went on to become the mother of the future Queen and George V's wife, Mary of Teck. The Anniversarian dynasty looks set to continue after all, with or without the help of William. 1827 was a pivotal year for William. Frederick, Duke of York, had died, which made William heir presumptive to the throne. George IV, who had spent the majority of his life doing what every other member of his family seemed to do, would now end. His days of womanising and drink finally caught up with him in 1830, when he died. William, ready or not, was now about to take a leap of faith. It was anyone's guess as to how it would end, but as the public liked to call him Sailor Billy, he was ready to go with Adelaide by his side. What could go wrong? The new queen was now set for a showdown with her court. It had to be cleaned and become spotless. Days of passionate behaviour would become a distant memory. A new era was starting, one where manners and integrity were top of the list and many ladies were barred due to their previous shady dealings. Adelaide was very fond of one of the Duchess of Kent's children, also called Victoria. Though when the Duchess demanded that a young princess have her own special procession at the Abbey, William stirred. He said she should not discount the fact that his wife Adelaide could also still have children, and if the young princess did attend, she would be merely classed as the Princess Victoria, and nothing more. The Duchess replied and said, OK, that's fine, we won't attend at all. Adelaide was distraught at the news, but William didn't care. He'd always had a strong dislike towards his sister-in-law. William was not what you'd call a strong ruler, but the people liked him. His popularity grew and was far higher than that of his predecessors. Adelaide played a significant part in this through her charity work. She would give away up to a third of her own resources to help others and worthy causes. She was also the first queen to employ an almoner to look into potential new trusts and charitable organisations. But it wasn't always pleasant times for the couple. They had their moments of downturns like any other. The Reform Bill of 1532 was one such occasion. It was an act based on spreading the demographic range of landowners and the aristocracy. It's entirely possible the public thought Adelaide was behind the move and the king in knocking back this idea. Due to Adelaide's well-known influence on her husband, people put two and two together, as they did. Yet it's unlikely Adelaide knew much about politics. She was and would always be a lady who concentrated on handling matters of the home and keeping her husband domestic bliss. A rumour spread about Adelaide, now 43 years old, that she had become pregnant to one of her courtiers. But once again it was classed as utter nonsense. But for a time, it got people thinking. In 1835, things began to change. William was now suffering from ill health, and Adelaide's favourite princess, Victoria, now aged 16, suddenly fell to typhoid. But luckily, she fully recovered. Yet while in bed recuperating, her mother and an advisor called Sir John Conroy attempted to get Victoria to sign a paper nominating him as her advisor when she became queen. But Victoria refused. It was time to step out of the pressurised relationship with her mother now began to completely distance herself. On the 20th of June 1837, William died. Adelaide was by his side. On the 28th of June 1838, Victoria was crowned queen. Adelaide would call her Vicky and their long friendship continued to grow. Although Adelaide had slipped back into a more quiet lifestyle, she would still ensure to be with the queen at the most important events. Her wedding in 1840 to Albert of saxe coburg and the christenings of her first six children between 1840 and 1848. Adelaide was undoubtedly a genuine lady, and we know how charitable and forgiving she was. Yet one small detail about her is quite possibly unknown to many. She had what you might call a quirk. She loved pins so much that they would be kept in rows in pincushions in an orderly format. So if one were borrowed and then not returned, Adelaide would have the whole house, if necessary, hunting it down until it was replaced back in its spot. There's no rhyme or reason as to why she felt this way about such a simple object. Maybe it was a childhood order from a fierce governess. It is of course unsubstantiated, but nonetheless, an interesting insight into the Dowager Queen's life. <laughs>
In 1849, Adelaide's health was now starting to become a concern. Victoria was expecting her seventh child, but Adelaide would never see this. She died quietly at the age of 67 and was buried alongside her husband at Windsor. William and Adelaide performed an excellent service to the royal family. However, they lacked a certain dynamic that held together a chronically sick monarchy in Britain and others around Europe were toppling like a pack of cards. George IV had left the kingdom at its lowest point for many years, but the couple fared well and brought a British monarchy the people were proud of back to life. It was great praise indeed and a fitting memorial for both William and Adelaide. <laughs>